I believe it is started. Hi, good evening, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us for the UCF Office of Undergraduate Admissions Application Session, Admission and Application Session. My name is Kiana Machado. I serve as one of the Senior Assistant Directors for Undergraduate Admissions here at the University. Now, I, I am joined by some colleagues as well. So if you do have any questions for us throughout the session, please put them in the Q&A and we'll be able to get to those as quickly as possible. Now, if they do find that some questions are better for the group as a whole, they might save those for the end and I'll go ahead and review them for you all. So let's go ahead and get started. So just a general overview of what we, dis we will be discussing this evening. So I'll be going over the admission process, criteria, what it is that we look for to be able to make the admission offer, and just give you some information about the application and the options that you have as far as submission of this information. And then we'll dive a little bit into the UCF Spark form. So creating an account for Spark and completing and submitting this information to us. And then we'll have some time for questions at the end. 
So best piece of advice that we can give to a prospective freshman is to apply early. So that for us means about September to November of the senior year. Now here at UCF, we do have a rolling admission process. It means that we don't have a specific cutoff date or time frame by which we'll make all final decisions on the application. So essentially when the committee begins to review applications, they'll continue to do so up until we've met our enrollment goals. Now that does allow you as an applicant the opportunity to also continue to get us updated information that can strengthen the application for admission. Now we do advise that you apply early because typically during this time frame, we don't have as many applications coming in and can make more admission offers. If you wait too late to apply, such as after December, we tend to have a much larger application pool and look for higher credentials to be able to make those offers. Now from undergraduate admissions, we also offer merit scholarships to incoming freshmen. It is automatic consideration once we have made that admission offer to the university. Now with our scholarships, typically by mid to late December, we don't have as much funding remaining. So yet another reason to apply early, get us your information. So once we have made that admission offer, we'll still have plenty of time in the process to consider you for these scholarship opportunities. And then on campus housing, it is on a first come first serve basis. You're not able to apply for on campus housing until you're actually offered admission to the university. So again, another reason for you to go ahead and begin the application process as soon as possible. Now here on the screen, you will be able to view our application deadlines, but again, take our advice, apply early, get us that information, and your application files will be complete long before these dates come around. Now, in order to be able to complete the application itself, we do require some key items from you. Of course, the most obvious is to go ahead and get us that application. UCF is a member of the common application, so you can definitely apply through there, or we do still have our UCF online application through our website, and we have no preference as to which one you submit. There will be an application fee of $30, which can be paid online, but we also accept waivers. So if you have an SAT, ACT, NACAC waiver, or if you qualify for free or reduced lunch, get us this information and we will use it to waive that fee for you. Now we'll also require your official SPARC form or the self-provided academic record for nights. This is where you're gonna be manually inputting your high school course history and your grades, which we'll dive a little bit more into shortly. Now, upon receipt of the SPARC form, we will automatically perform a recalculation of the high school GPA that is only based upon your academic core classes. These are your English, math, science, social science, and modern languages only. Any pre-AP, pre-ACE, pre-IB, or honors courses that come from the core, we will give you an extra half a point. So for example, if you took honors English, receive an A, that's a 4.5 on the 4.0 scale. Any AP, IB, ACE or dual enrollment courses that come from the core, we will go ahead and give you an extra one point. So if you take um, AP statistics and receive an A, that'll be a 5.0 on the 4.0 scale. Now the last piece of required information are your official SAT and or ACT test scores. Now we do not have a preference as to which of these um, exams you should be sitting for, but we do advise that if possible, you take both exams at least once. This way, you know which of the two you're most competitive for or which of the two you're most comfortable with in the event that you do choose to go ahead and retest later on. Now, we do super score these as well. So if you have taken them multiple times or plan on doing so, we will take the highest score from each of the sections, combine that, and give you the greatest possible score. Now the application essay is not a required component of the file, but it is definitely encouraged as it does allow us to learn more about you beyond the academic credentials. 
Now here we have our fall 2021 freshman class profile, just to give you a sense of where our current freshman class stood. So as you can see here on the screen, for this fall semester, we did receive over 40,000 applications. Nearly 14,000 of these were offered admission to the university and a little over 4,200 enrolled at UCF. Now we have our class averages on the screen, but definitely draw your attention more so to these mid ranges. The ranges classify the middle 50% of the freshmen that came to UCF this fall semester. Now what that means is that 25% did exceed the 4.46, 1375, and 30 ACT. However, the other 25% fell below the 3.96, 1255, and 26, and they were still offered admission to the university. So even if you're falling below right now, do not get discouraged, still apply and get us your information. The committee will not deny you automatically. They will allow you extra time during the review process to get us updated information that can strengthen the application. So for example, this could be updated mid-year grades, once those are be available by your high school, or updated test scores if you do choose to retest after applying to UCF. And also keep in mind, these are fall numbers. So if we have any seniors joining us this evening, um, if you apply for fall 2022, you will receive automatic consideration for summer 2022 and spring 2023, both of which are not as competitive as that fall term. Now we do still offer our top 10 nights program here at UCF. This program does guarantee admission for high achieving high school students that meet the qualifications for the program. Now the guarantee is for the summer, fall or spring semester, depending upon which of these three you are most competitive for. So what that means is that while you do have a guaranteed admission offer as a top 10 night, it is not an automatic decision. Once the committee has all required information from you, they must still assess the strength of your credentials and then determine which of our three semesters you are most competitive for. Now, in addition to guaranteed on-campus uh, guaranteed admission, you also have guaranteed on-campus housing if you apply for housing by May 1st. Now, to qualify for the program, you must be attending a Florida high school, rank in the top 10% of your senior class, if your high school does not have a ranking system in place, we'll look for a 3.9 UCF recalculated GPA. You must score a minimum of an 1100 on the SAT or a 22 on the ACT and complete four units of math by the end of senior year. Now to be considered for the top 10 nights program, you must have the application, all required application materials in by January 15th. If you meet the qualifications for the program, you will have a guaranteed decision on or before March 1st of the senior year. Now there is no separate application for top 10 nights, nor do you have to request consideration for the program. If we have all items in by that deadline of January 15th, we consider you automatically for top 10 nights. Now here's a brief timeline just to give you a sense of what you should be doing throughout the year. So right now, September to December, get us an application, your fees or your waiver, um, your SPARC form and your test scores for us to go ahead and begin the review process. It's also a great time for you to go ahead and retake the SAT or ACT if you wanna make yourself more competitive for admission or scholarship opportunities. Now for you seniors, the FAFSA opens up in just a few days on October 1st, so this Friday. The UCF priority deadline is going to be December 1st. So you want that consideration for institutional aid, work study opportunities, be sure to go ahead and get that FAFSA in as soon as possible after it opens up for you. And then of course, update your SPARC form. So once your um, mid-year grades do become available, you can go back into the SPARC and update the form with this information so we can perform a recalculation of your high school GPA.
Now, if UCF is truly where you want to be, and once you're off for admission, you know for sure you want to go ahead and make this your home, you can go ahead and follow up by getting a set enrollment deposit. It is $200, but it will be applied towards your first semester's tuition. After receipt of the deposit, if orientation is open at that point, you can then register for an orientation session. These typically take place between March to August. Um, and this is where you can learn more about UCF, resources, and most importantly, where you're gonna register for your courses. Now, June to August, you will begin your official journey as a UCF Knight for Life, but we do still need some items from you. We will need your official final high school transcript. This is the only point in the process that we request this information. Um, it has to show the graduation date on there, as well as dual enrollment transcripts and any AP, IB, A scores that you may have. Now scholarships, as I mentioned earlier with our freshman merit awards, it will be automatic consideration once you're offered admission for the summer or fall semesters. So you do not have to apply separately for a merit scholarship. Now just be mindful that the awards are not solely based upon academic credentials. They are also based upon the timing of the application. What that means is that what you may have qualified for in November or December may change come February or March, since we do not have as much funding remaining at that late in the year. So again, apply early and get us your information as quickly as possible. Now, it is competitive to be offered a merit scholarship. We only offer these to about 25% of the incoming freshman class. So typically, to have the best chance of gaining a scholarship from us, you do have to be around the higher end of the mid-ranges that I provided earlier. Now the awards range anywhere from $6,000 to $42,000 dispersed over your four years studying here at the university. Now switching gears just a little bit, we're gonna discuss the application and the UCF Spark form. So once you are ready to go ahead and apply to the university, you can navigate to our website listed here on your screens. So admissions.ucf.edu. On the top right hand side, you'll be able to see that yellow apply link. Once you do click on that, you'll be prompted to select one of the two application options. So again, these are the common app or the UCF online application. You just have to do one of them. You don't have to do both. Um, you can go ahead and choose your preferred application method. And as I mentioned earlier, we truly do not have a preference as to which one you ultimately submit to us. Now, upon submission of the UCF online application, you will be able to access your future night's application portal um, automatically using those same login credentials that you use to complete and submit the online application. Now, if you choose to use the common app, know that you will gain access to the future night's portal shortly after. We will send you an email once we have downloaded the application that will prompt you to go ahead and create an account account for the future night's application portal. Now, independently of which application method you used, once you log in, you'll be able to see this status page. It's where you're going to view updates to your application status. So whatever decision has been made will be posted up here for you to be able to view. But you'll also be able to see this checklist that's on the screen. And this will show you exactly what items we have received from you, when they were received, as you can see, as well as what items we still need from you to be able to complete the application. So if we do have something for you already, you'll be able to view that green check mark, letting you know you've satisfied that requirement, so you don't have to worry about that. But if we're still waiting on some items, you'll be able to see that um, red X letting you know these are items that you do have to work on getting us for us to be able to complete the application file. Now, in regards to the Spark form, once you do log in and you have not, if you had not yet completed the Spark form, you'll see this link here, which is the last item on the checklist. You simply click on that and it's going to automatically direct you to 
the start of the spark form essentially. So I'll give you some basic instructions. If you do want detailed instructions on completion of the form, just click on that instructions link and you'll be able to go ahead and review that information. Now we do ask that you use either Chrome, Firefox or Explorer to submit the spark form. If you are a Mac user, um, I plan on using your Mac laptop or your iPhones, we ask that you still limit yourself to one of these three browsers um, instead of using Safari. Now, once you hit that get started link, here you'll be able to see the complete tab. So you'll see the school's information, English, math, natural science, social science, world language information, fine arts, and electives. Now the schools should automatically populate for you. So you should be able to view a listing of your schools. Now in regards to will know that it will only be your graduating high school. So if you have attended multiple high schools or we're doing virtual school, it will only show you that graduating high school, which is all that we really do ultimately need, as well as your dual enrollment institutions that you either attended or plan on attending prior to entering the university. Now, for whatever reason, you cannot, you do not view your high school or your school's information. You can new school and manually input this information and it'll be added to this list for you to review as well. Now here we have an example of what the English tab looks like. It's the first of all the other academic core and courses that we would need for you to input onto the Spark form. Now we're not gonna review each of these tabs for you, but we have the English one just as an example for you to view what you will see on your end once you go in. Now before actually starting the process of inputting courses into the Spark form, we strongly advise that you have a copy of your high school transcript with you to ensure the accuracy of this information. This way you can pull the course name, the grade, um, the course number, and have all information be accurate as you go ahead and list it onto the Spark. Because again, this is what we'll be using to review your application for a decision. So once you are ready, you'll hit the add a new course link that's here in blue and you'll be able to see this pop up. So again, it's gonna provide you with another option to look at detailed instructions in case you wanna review this information prior to adding any courses. But as you see here, you'll just simply add the course name as listed on your high school transcript, the course number. Now the subject area is gonna automatically populate so you don't have to input this information because it will be dependent upon which tab you're in. So if you're in the math tab, it'll automatically say math, natural science, natural science, science, so on and so forth. You'll then select the grade level that you took the course. So if ninth grade, then you took it then. If it was a 10th grade course, 11th grade course, you'll select that option from the drop down menu. And then select the course level. So if it's a regular course or AP, IB, dual enrollment, um, you'll go ahead and select that option as well. And again, these are all going to be drop downs for you to go ahead and be able to click. And then it's gonna ask if it was a full year course that has a final grade. If so, you'll simply put the course grades in semester one and semester two. Now, if it was not a four year course, you'll select the no option and then you'll be able to view um, a detailed instruction page letting you know based upon what type of course it was, how the information should be added onto that Spark form. And once you have completed um, the adding of the course, you'll be able to see it here in list form. So it'll give you the course name, the high school that you took the course, the level, the grades that you earned, what grade uh, you took it at. So grade level 9, 10th, 11th, 12th. Now, even if you're in progress, for, let's say an English course during senior year of high school, we still want this information. So you'll, you'll just go ahead and do the same process Rather than putting it in grades, you'll simply select the IP option for in progress. That way we know that you are currently enrolled in this course and plan to complete it prior to high school graduation.
Now you'll do the same process for all of your courses. Now you can choose to either do all your English courses at the same time and then move on to math and natural science, or you can do them in sequential order. So you can switch between tabs at any point. So if you wanna focus first on your, let's say your ninth grade coursework and do English, math, natural science, however it's listed on your transcript, you can also do that as well. So you're not limited to having to wait to first complete all the English courses to then be able to move on to math. You can switch between tabs at any point in time. And here, once you have input all information, we will provide a comprehensive course summary, letting you know all the information that you have added onto the Spark form. It is important to be able to review this and verify the accuracy of this information prior to submitting the form itself. Because once you have submitted it, you cannot go back and make any edits to the Spark form. So review the complete course summary that's gonna be provided to you. It'll give you a complete account on the total course units that you have for each of the um, subject areas, as well as the school names, and again, a complete listing. If you realize that you made any errors along the way, whether it be inputting a wrong course number or a wrong course title or grade, or anything like that, you can still go back and make those edits in the appropriate tab prior to finalizing and submitting this form online. And then we do still give you just one more step before you can actually submit it. These are just some statements of affirmation to confirm that you understand that the information provided is accurate. Um, and also letting you know that if for whatever reason, this information does not match up to your final high school transcript, the university does reserve the right to rescind the admission offer or change your admission term. So it is very important to, again, go back, take the time to review that course summary to make sure that you input all the correct information. Because once we get that final high school transcript, we will go back and review this to verify that you input all the correct courses as well as the grades and have the correct GPA calculation on file. Now, once you're done with all of that, you realize that you are good to go, you put all the correct courses, all the correct grades, um, you will go ahead and submit that information. And again, once you hit submit, it is sent over to us and you cannot make any edits. Now, if you realize that, you know, you input something incorrectly and you accidentally hit submit, you can then connect with our um, Spark team. We have the email address for you and they'll go ahead and reopen it for you or make those edits on your behalf. Now, this is just some snippets of what you'll see before and after submission of the Spark form. So prior to submitting the form, you'll see that that Spark um, checklist item is still X out, letting you know it. But once we have received it, it'll go ahead and get that green checkbox, letting you know that it has been received and the date that it's been received as well. And again, once it's received, showing us received, you cannot make any changes to the Spark form at that point in time. We will use the information provided to go ahead and compute that UCF recalculated GPA for you. Now some application tips, as I reiterated during um, the presentation, have a copy of your high school transcript with you when you are completing the SPARC form. It is essential to make sure this information is as accurate as possible. And if you are a domestic applicant, you do not have to get us a copy of your high school transcript during the review process. We actually won't include this information in your application file because we are basing the decision upon the information that you added onto that Spark form. So you do not have to contact your counselors or your you know, counseling offices or your high schools requesting to get us this information. You will simply input all of the information on the Spark form. If anything, get yourself a copy of the high school transcript from your schools if needed to complete the form accurately. And check your email often for updates. Once any update is made onto that checklist or your status page, we will send you an email letting you know to log in to view these changes. And again, that's just keeping yourself up to date and on top of the application status and the receipt of items that we need from you to be able to complete the file. 
and know that we can only accept official SAT or ACT test scores. So you do not, you're not able to solely rely on those test scores provided on the applications. You would have to contact ACT or College Board and require and request that they get those official scores because without that, we will not complete the application and begin the review process. And as already mentioned, be sure to use um, one of the listed browsers. So Safari, Chrome, Internet Explorer, Firefox, um, and I'm sorry, not Safari. <laughs> Try to steer away from Safari. So use Chrome, Firefox, Internet Explorer. And that's basically it for this session. Um, if you do have any further questions after today's presentation and session, please connect with us. Here you have our email address, our phone number. We definitely wanna serve as a resource for you throughout this process. You also have our um, physical address. We do accept walk-ins, so you want us well, to- My Zoom is frozen. Yep. And I'm the host. Oh. I don't know. I can't like do anything right now. So as I was mentioning, um, we also do accept walk-ins. So if you do want to come in and have a one-on-one -on -one conversation with a counselor, we're always available Mondays through Fridays, 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. And keep in mind that we do have other sessions coming up that will be full of great information for you. So we'll have our financial aid session taking place next week, Thursday at 6.30 p.m. It will be full of tons of great information about the FAFSA and the application process to get aid from the university. And then we have our housing residence life session taking place the following week on October 12th, also at 6.30 to review some of the on-campus housing options that we have for you and more detailed information about applying for on-campus housing after you've been offered admission to the university. So now let's go ahead and dive into the questions that we got here in the Q&A. Okay, so can you talk about how rolling admission works and how you review all different parts of the application as they come in at different times and stages? So as I mentioned throughout the session with rolling admission, it just means that once the committee begins to review applications, they'll continue to do so up until we've met those enrollment goals. And it provides you as the applicant the opportunity to continue to get us updated information that can strengthen the application. So it can be those mid-year grades once they're released or or updated test scores if you do choose to go ahead and retest and make yourself more competitive for admissions purposes. And it also means that we don't have a specific date or timeline at which we'll release all decisions. It's just the more competitive you are, um, the faster you'll get that response back from the committee. Now, will you touch on the Honors College? So with the Honors College, it is going to be a separate application process. So you can apply prior to admission, just know that they will not review the application until you're actually offered admission to the university. So oftentimes students will wait until they're actually offered admission and then apply to the Honors College. Now in many cases, if they feel as though you're a competitive candidate for the Honors College, they'll send you an application in the mail. It is still, you know, hard copy applications for them. They do not have an electronic version available at this point in time. Um, but even if you're offered admission, you don't hear from them, that's not a problem. You can still connect and they'll be more than happy to send you an application for you to go ahead and complete uh, and submit over to that. Now, also, I'm interested in the College of Medicine Biomedical Sciences program. Is that a UCF or a Lake Nona? So that's still going to be on the main campus. So the College of Medicine over on Lake Nona is going to be our medical school. Um, so you're not going to be quite there yet as you complete your bachelor's degree. So the bulk of your courses will still be on the main campus. Now, if your grades go down after being accepted, can admission be canceled? It is a possibility. Now we ask you to get ahead of it though. So if something has come up and it has caused for those grades to go down a little bit, send us an email, something in writing, letting us know the situation. That way the committee is aware before they um, go ahead and review that final transcript. Now, usually if it's like a grade or two, it 
right? Not really result in changes to the mission offer or the decision itself, but it's always best to notify us ahead of time. We look at that more favorably rather than you waiting until it happens and getting us that final transcript for us to then see that there has been a drop in the grades. Now, once I graduate, I will have my first year of college done. So do I apply as a freshman or a transfer student? You are only classified as a transfer if you've earned 12 or more credits after high school graduation. So even if you are coming to UCF for dual enrollment credit, we'll definitely accept that at the university. But for admissions purposes, we are still considering you a freshman applicant. Um, so you'll still have to get us that SPARC form as well as official essay to your ACT scores for us to be able to consider you for admission to the university. Mm. Okay, so what exactly is the SPARC form? We have reviewed that. Um, let us know if you have any further questions. Now, what final grade should we put in if our high school does trimesters? Just the first two. So in the event that your high school is doing, sorry, in the event that your high school does a trimester, um, if, it, if it is a full year, enter the final grade in both semester one and two. If you have completed a course for only one or two trimesters, enter the grade in semester one only. So these are also instructions that are located on our SPARC form instructions page. It'll outline, depending on what type of course you took, what type of schedule you had, what you should be inputting into that SPARC form. Now, if I am a dual enrollment student, I decide to apply before my final semester of college classes by only add the fall courses and then come back later to fill in the courses for the second semester. Also, when do you guys prefer the SPARC form to be submitted? Um, so it's answering that last second question first, as soon as possible after you gain access to that future nights portal, because it'll just be one less item for you to have to worry about during the review process, knowing that you have that completed and submitted over to us. Now, in regards to inputting the courses, if you do not yet have your schedule for a spring semester, um, then you can go ahead and just leave that blank or not input that information rather. And then once we do reopen the spark for you to input mid-year grades, which typically happens in January, at that point, I imagine you'll have that second semester schedule and then you can input those in-progress courses that you're currently enrolled in um, at your local institution. Now, when is the spark form officially due? If it is not able to be edited, when would second some great semester we put in. So it's due as soon as possible after submission of the application. Do not delay getting us that SPARC form because again, until we have your SPARC form as well as your official test scores, we cannot begin that review process of the application to provide you with the decision. Now, yes, after you submit the SPARC, you're not able to make edits until mid-year grades become available. So at that point, we will send out a notification letting all of our uh, applicants know and you can go back into the SPARC and input this information. And in regards to second semester grades, well, that's basically your, your final semester of high school. You wouldn't need that final semester. So you're gonna input your SPARC grades initially when you complete the application. So ninth through 11th grade, and then 12th, whatever, whatever you have in progress. Then once we reopen it for mid-year grades, you can go ahead and add those mid-year grades from first semester of senior year. Then at that point, if you've been offered admission and choose to enroll, you simply get us the final high school transcript once it becomes available. Do I use my unofficial transcript to fill out the SPARC form and request an official one and I'll be my counselor when I'm done applying or when I graduate? Yes, so use a copy of your unofficial high school transcript to complete the SPARC form and then we won't need another copy of this information until the final one um, becomes available. So again, you don't need your official transcripts in any way during the initial review process. It's only until after you're offered admission, if you choose to enroll, we then need the official final one that has a graduation date to be sent over. When would the selection decision be shared with us? So we will begin to review freshman applications shortly. Um, once that happens, if we have all required information for you and have been able to make that decision, you'll be able to view that information through your future nights portals, but we have not yet began reviewing and making decisions for our freshman students. 
Now for the essays, do you require to answer all the questions or pick two essay questions during the application review, including the Common App essay? So we advise that you follow whichever application you're using. So there are different prompts um, for the Common App versus a UCF online application. Um, we advise that you go ahead and select one of the prompts, create one 500 word essay, or you can select two of the prompts and do two 250 word essays, whatever your preference is. Or sometimes students just choose to do a personal statement that's also perfectly fine as well. Now in the Common App, there is a section for inputting essay to your ACT scores. Do you advise us to input those scores as well as send scores directly from ACT or College Board to ensure scores are received? So we do not accept self-reported scores. So even if you put them on the Common App or the UCF online application, you would still be required to request that SAT or ACT get us your official scores for us to complete the application file. Is admissions harder or easier depending on the major chosen? Is undecided choices discouraged? Not at all. If you're undecided or undeclared, please feel free to put this information um, on the application. If this is the case, what we're going to do is connect you, if you're offered admission, connect you with our Commetsi office, so the NICE Major Exploration and Transition Center, and they'll be able to help navigate your different options for you to then choose which major is the best fit for you. And during the initial review of the application, major does not have a bearing on the decision itself. So again, putting it undecided or undeclared is not going to impact you negatively in any way. If I also want to apply for ROTC, should I do so after I've been offered admission or after I submit my application? So ROTC is going to be a completely separate application process and it's not handled by undergraduate admissions. It is handled directly by ROTC. Um, I'm not quite sure what their preference is. If you can apply to them prior to actually being offered admission to the university, we would advise that you connect with our ROTC office directly um, to get more detailed information. Now, if we submit the application in November, when will we know if we get notification whether we are in or out? So as I mentioned, we're rolling admissions, so we really do not have a specific time frame that I can provide. It's typically the more competitive an applicant is, the faster they'll get that response from the committee. Is there a specific essay prompt for the optional college essay application deadline in November? There is not. So again, you're going to be using um, the essay prompt provided on whichever application you're submitting. So just follow that um, guide and you can go ahead and submit whichever prompt again um, is listed on there. My son graduates high school in May. When do we start our application to UCF? When do we submit paperwork? So as soon as possible. So again, the ideal time is September to November of that senior year. So right now is when he should be getting us an application, completing the SPARC form and getting us his official test scores for us to begin that review process. How do we update our essay to your ACT scores after submitting? Um, you would simply just request that ACT or College Board get us those updated scores once they become available. Is a recommended essay open topic or is it there? So we're getting a lot of questions about the application essay as I've been um, reiterating, just do whichever um, essay prompt is provided on the application that you are submitting. And in regards to submission of the official essay to your ACT scores, these would be handled directly through um, College Board or ACT. So you can definitely connect with them and request if they get us those official scores for us to begin the review process. What if the 10% requirement is not met yet? Every other is met for the top 10. So in order to qualify for the program, you have to be in that top 10% of your senior class by the application deadline for the program, which is January 15th. If you do not meet the requirements by the deadline, we unfortunately cannot consider you for top 10 nights, but we'll definitely consider you for general admission to the university. Can a student who wants to submit the admission application in October and has taken the SAT submit updated SAT scores if he improves at a later date? Absolutely. So you would just have to get college board get those updated scores for us to be able to include this in your application file.
My common app essay is a 650-word limit. Would I not be able to submit that through the official UCF website? Unfortunately, no. You have to follow the instructions provided on the application um, that you're using. You cannot submit um, an essay through the UCF application and but still do the common app, um, nor can we accept the essay after submission of the application. So follow whatever, whichever prompt, um, whichever application guidelines you're using. Okay, what is the biggest difference between applying for fall and summer semesters? So this is a great question. In regards to applying for fall, it tends to be the most competitive term because it is the application term that we get most applications for. So most of our applicants are seeking that fall admission offer to the university, which is what makes summer and spring slightly less competitive because we do not receive as many other two terms. Now, if you are wanting to start your college career a little bit earlier in the summer semester, you can most definitely apply for that term as well. Um, ultimately, what we advise your applicants is to go ahead and apply for whichever semester you truly want to enter UCF. If it's fall, even if your credentials may not quite be within those um, mid ranges, still apply for fall. You'll get that automatic summer and spring consideration as well. But that is what really makes the, the biggest difference in the process. It's just that fall is the most competitive term for admission to the university. If we put a major put a major down and still want to explore options, is it difficult to change the major selected? Not at all. I mean, but if you're still not quite sure what major you truly want, again, you can put undeclared or undecided, and we'll connect you as an admitted student to our nice major inspiration transition center, and they'll be able to help you navigate different options to then solidify which of our majors would be the best fit for you. Now, in the event that you do come to UCF knowing I know for sure I want to major in biology, um, but then you change your mind. If that happens prior to you entering the university, you can go ahead and, and request to change your major through your portals or during the orientation session. Or if you're a current UCF Knight that wants to change your major, you can also do that through your portal as well. If I am taking the ACT in late October and don't receive my scores until early November, would I still be eligible to apply? Is the application deadline May 1st? So the hard deadline is May 1st, but we do advise you to go ahead and apply early. Um, so even if you do not yet have um, ACT scores available, you can still start the application and submit this, as well as submit your official SPARC form. And then once we get those ACT scores on file for you in early November, we can then begin the review process. Will there be a difference in financial aid when applying to spring versus fall? No, the financial aid office will review your FAFSA to let you know what you'd qualify for for the academic year. Um, so you do the FAFSA once a year. So once you receive your aid package, it will show you your aid for fall um, and spring as well. And if you did do the prior FAFSA year, it'll also show you summer. So depending upon your entry term, you might do, for example, for this year, you might do 2021, 2022 to cover summer of 2022. But if you're coming for fall, you'll simply do um, 2022, 2023, um, and it'll cover fall and spring of next year. And again, we do have our financial aid session coming up next week, and they'll be able to give you more detailed information as well. Now, can you address your Seminole State to UCF path? Absolutely. So at UCF, we have our direct connect to UCF program. So that's where we partner with six institutions here in Central Florida, with Seminole being one of those. The other five are Valencia College, Eastern Florida State College, Lake Sumner State College, College of Central Florida, and Daytona State College. Essentially, if you do attend one of these six institutions, earn the AA degree, have at least a 2.0 GPA, and are in good conduct and academic standing, you will have a guaranteed offer of admission to the university. Now I applied for fall 2021 on May 2021, and a decision wasn't made. I reapplied in August for spring 2021. 
22, I'm assuming, um, will the previous application be withdrawn, the new application be considered? So we're only looking at your most recent application when making a decision. Um, of course, the old application will still be on file for you. We'll have access to that information as well as to the information that you added onto that application itself but we'll be looking at the information mainly on the new application as well. Um, so depending upon your, your classification, if you're a freshman or a transfer, um, we would need certain items from you, which will be able to view a listing of those on your portal. Now on the Common App, it asks why you see app and why you chose your major. Do we have to answer these questions in addition to the Common App essay question? It's not a requirement. Um, of course, it's always good, as I mentioned during the presentation, to include as much information, including that essay and these additional questions on the application itself. Just as an added note, you're not able to get us additional information after submission of the application. So same applies to the essay, the same would apply to letters of recommendation. We do not accept that um, information after submission of the application or in the case of letters of recommendation, we don't accept it at all, unfortunately. So really the application is your time to shine um, and get as much information about you as possible. That way we can review that as we make the decision on the application. Now, I would like to become a physician assistant and major in health science. I noticed that there are two different health sciences, so I was wondering which one should I choose? That is a wonderful question. Um, however, we don't do academic advisement. Quite frankly, if you're choosing to go into the health field, there are quite a few different options available for you here at UCF. Um, I would advise you connect with the College of the Major. So in the case of health science, it will be the College of Health Professions and Sciences, and they'll be able to give you further guidance as far as which major would be the best fit for you, depending upon what your ultimate career goal is. Now, if we live with one parent, are we obligated to state information about the second parent on the Common App? No, that is completely optional information. Now, when do you of their admissions? Again, as I've mentioned, we're rolling admissions, so there is no date or deadline that I can provide you with. Um, it's just the more competitive you are, the faster will provide you with that decision. I am aware that transfer credits for a community college vary on the specific class taken, but I wanted to ask if you know if college credits are accepted by UCF at all or only AP class credits for college credit. To be completely frank with you, that's something that we'll probably have to look a little bit more into. Um, college Credit Plus is not something that we have previously or I have previously heard of. I can tell you that usually if it, uh, if it is one of the accrediting bodies that we accept at the university, the credits will transfer over to UCF. Um, in the case of like AP, IB, ACE, CLEP, those scores definitely or those test results do result in credit here at the university, um, but College um, Plus is not something I previously heard of. You can definitely send us an email though and we'll be more than happy to look into that for you. Now, I know that I'm a dependent, however, it is solely up to me to pay for college. Will my parents' income affect my eligibility even though I will not be receiving financial assistance from them? That is a great question. Um, again, we do have our financial aid session coming up next week. So you can definitely ask more in-depth questions about what your eligibility may be. Just know that in some cases, you might probably have to reach out to them via phone or send them an email to get more of those specific questions to your case answered. Now, does both dual enrollment and AP classes count as one point or each or combined? So AP, IB, ACE, dual enrollment, they will all get one additional quality point in that GPA recalculation. Um, Pre-AP, pre-ACE, pre-IB or honors will receive that additional half a point in the recalculation. Now, how many letters of recommendations do we need when submitting our applications due in November? That is a grand total of zero. Um, we do not accept letters of recommendation during the review process, so you would not have to get that information to us. Even if you chose to, unfortunately, it will not be added to your application nor reviewed um, by the admissions committee. You are just focusing on the information provided on the application in addition to your academic credentials. Now, can I do a semester of UCF online this spring and then go in person when I move there next year? 
I am transferring from out of state. I believe that you can. Um, you could only make that switch once, though, so you'd have to be sure. Um, so you would have to connect with UCF online um, as a UCF student, and they can give you more information on making that transition from online only to in person. But again, those changes can only be made once. Now we do still have a couple of minutes, so if you have any additional questions, please put them in the Q&A. I'm more than happy to address them for you. And again, we've covered most of the information about the application process, what we look for. Of course, we dove a little bit more into the SPARC form for you. Um, and just remember, if you have any specific questions about financial aid or housing, they will have their sessions coming up next week and the following. So you do not want to miss out on those. How would I determine the possibility of accepting my application if our school no longer does ranking of classes? So the top 10 nights program is simply for those schools that do still have ranking. Um, if your school does not have ranking system in place, again, we'll look for that 3.9 UCF recalculated GPA if you meet all other requirements. Um, and ultimately we will still consider you for general admission to the university. So top 10 nights is not the only way of being offered admission to UCF by any means. Now in regards to the recording, we will be sending this information out to our attendees and also posting it on our YouTube page. So be on the lookout for that information. Now, can I apply for scholarships if I'm from out of state? So even if you're an out of state applicant, you will still be considered automatically for a freshman merit scholarships. So you don't have to apply separately for those opportunities. Now, through our financial aid office website, they do have something called Access to Opportunities, or A2O, which is a listing of different um, opportunities that you will have available to you as a UCF student. And again, they'll dive more into that during the financial aid session next week, because you do not want to spoil anything for you. Do I have to live on campus if I am transferring? So on-campus housing is completely optional for all of our UCF students, even our incoming freshmen. While we do strongly encourage you to live on campus, um, it's not something that is mandatory for any of our UCF nights. You can still explore off-campus options um, or other housing accommodations. Okay, so it seems like we don't have any more questions coming in. So I wanna thank you all once again for joining us this evening. I hope this information was um, of use for you and resourceful. If you do have any questions after today, please connect with us, send us an email, give us a phone call. We are more than happy to assist you in any way that we can. And don't forget those two sessions that are coming up, the one that we'll be uh, having next week for financial aid and then the following for housing. And that is gonna be it for us. So go nice. Have a great evening, everyone.